Last week, which is uh, November 2019, I posted this image in the Autodesk Maya f uh, forum on Facebook. And uh, I asked, can we attach a polygon to a NURBS surface? Yes, we can, sort of. More about it next week. Next week is now. In this case, this is a NURBS surface. This is a NURBS loft. And this is a polygon surface. And uh, in addition to that, I rendered the same scene in 10 passes with the GPU and then with the CPU. And both images basically look the same. But one took 14 times more rendering time than the other one. I got uh, an, an interesting comment by Ricardo Perez Ros Rosette, kind of a hater question. He asked, perhaps, why? Why would you connect a polygon to a NURBS? What is the purpose of it? Well, I don't know. It's just fun to do. And once you know how to handle these little tools here and see where problems occur and how you can overcome them, you're more fit in this software and you can just skip it or just stick to it. We create two objects. One is a NURBS object. This is a blue section here, a NURBS sphere. And in the NURBS make NURBS sphere node, we open the sphere and we rotate it just a little bit like this. I know why I'm doing this. So um, I'm going to polygon modeling now and select, for example, a disk. And I move the disk over here. Now we want two colors. New material, Arnold standard surface shader. We have two objects in the scene and we want to connect them. We cannot connect them topologically because they come from different worlds. There's a NURBS uh, surface and this is a polygon surface. But we can create a loft and you find the lofts here under curves and surfaces in the blue section, which uh, is this icon here. A loft needs several curves and we can select several curves, obviously. So um, let's, for example, right mouse click here and select the isopalms or isopalms. When you s choose any of these ones, these ones here, you can move them to the rim here. And that's my starting point for the new surface I'm going to construct. Now, uh, right mouse click here, and we don't have isopalms here because it's a, it's a polygon object. We select edges instead because they are more or less curves. And um, when I double click, actually with the shift key, because I don't want to lose that selection here, uh, one of the border edges here, I select all of them. All edge curves here. Now when I create a loft with this command here or with surfaces loft, I create a surface which sort of connects the two, but it is certainly not the surface we wanted. The problem here is that the loft command takes in account all curves and we selected many curves here. So it tries to make a bridge between this one and that one and finally that one. That's not what we want. So let's go back to the edge selection here. We still have selected the isopalm here and with the control key we deselect that part, the right part here. So only these are selected. So let's try the loft again. This looks a little bit more interesting but still we have the problem that the loft command makes bridges between the little curves here. So we undo this again. This is the trick basically. So let us just go to edges again and we've selected those here and we go to curves and we duplicate the surface curves. It's this command here. So we have the duplicates of actually it's two, four, six, eight curves now and they are not the edges anymore, they are independent, so to say. And with these curves here, we try to make the new bridge now. But uh, we would run into the same problem because we have eight curves 
instead of one clean curve here. So we go to curves and we attach the curves. And now we have eight curves, those ones here, and we have one curve here, which is representing all the eight ones, but it is connected. So with this selected, we can go to isopalm again, and with the shift key, because we don't want to lose that selection, we just move this over here, and we create a bridge surface, a loft. And now you see that the whole thing works. Now, can we delete these curves? We don't need them, right? So I delete them. When I delete them and I move the polygon up, the combination of surfaces does not work anymore. This just goes away. Why is that? Well, it has to do with construction history. This surface, by losing the intermediate tiny curves here, forgets about the connection to this surface. So when we undo this, and we still have the duplicated curves here, we can now select this and you see that the surface keeps intact which is quite an amazing process. So the construction history goes like this. This surface has certain edges and the edges have duplicates and the duplicates remember where they came from. And the duplicates become one single curve. That's the duplicated curve attached curve here. This is the one we created a loft with. So this curve remembers that it came from eight smaller curves which came from eight edges of this object. That's why everything is being remembered and that's construction history. So we can move this in all kinds of ways and we can even go into the details here and uh, pick certain points here and move them out and with a key B we make a soft selection and uh, so lots of things are possible here. So we connect it to surfaces. And the same applies, of course, to this. But that's more natural. We're used to that because NURBS have such an elegant construction history where we can manipulate lots of things later uh, in order to see the whole outcome. Why is this surface black? Well, it's gray underneath. So let's select it and uh, reverse the direction. And here you see that it is a loft with section spans 1. That means it doesn't have connections right here, which would be quite handy, so we just introduce them. So after having created the loft, we can still manipulate the loft. Now when we go to this object here, the NURBS, we can raise this and, well, move this inside and the new surface follows. All right. Right mouse click, object mode. Now, um, let us combine these two surfaces, the two NURB surfaces. We cannot include this one because it's a polygon. It still is. And under surfaces, we go to attach. So the, the two surfaces are attached. I could have used the align command as well, but I'm using the attach command. And now I hide that surface and the first surface and I sorry and I reverse the direction again so I have a very nice and clean NURBS surface here now I uh, create a polygon surface from it so I go to modify and convert I convert the NURBS to polygons I like to use the option box here because I'd like to have quads this is a matter of taste really apply so now I have a NURBS to polygon surface here and I can hide this one. They basically look more or less the same. And now I can select this one and go to Mesh and Combine. And that's my final surface. Just to, to recap, we created a NURBS object and a polygon object and in order to connect them, we used the loft function. The loft is this one. It's a NURBS topology. 
the polygon needs certain, well, intermediate objects in order to do that. That is selecting the edges, duplicating the edges, combining the edges so they make up one curve and then we build the bridge between the two of them. Attach both NURBS parts of the surface, the new one and the, and the previous one, and convert them to a polygon. And finally we combine the polygons all together. And with this I leave you alone. Whether you can do something with it or not, I'm pleased that you watched and have a nice day. Bye bye.